aggressive. Listen to it. Third gear. Fourth gear. Still rolling the back wheel. I have to say one thing about the Tenere, and it's a big one. All right, welcome to the last ride of this year with the Tenere 700. So this is my own personal bike that I've been driving for the last 20,000 kilometers since I bought it new last year. About a year ago, a little bit over a year ago. I thought I would make a quick ride episode of the Tenere 700 now that uh, I've been making some episodes with the previous bikes and I always seem to compare the bike to the T7. This is the 2022 model the very very base model I have about 18 20 different modifications to the bike some big some small and how I feel about the bike after these 20,000 kilometers would I still buy this bike that's actually a good question I don't know myself for example the Tour X660 I the main things that I have a gripe on with the Tenere 700 with that Torek the most of those things are fixed but many of you have complained that uh, the Torx 660 is not a comparison to the Tenere 700 because it's not as reliable. And that's a very good point. I can't really speak about the Torx uh, reliability, but I can speak about the Tenere reliability from uh, my friends riding them a lot. Like Pavlin from Motorcycle Adventures has almost 70,000 kilometers on his. And he has had no issues with the bike and for myself I have 20,000 kilometers on this Tenere and some of it very rough riding and I still have zero issues with the bike oh yeah it's uh, there's ice on the road it's slippery it's slipping in the back so I need to be a little bit careful that's probably a good thing to put <laughs> close to helmet strap at this point driving on icy roads here in Finland after the day, I'm gonna be putting this girl to sleep for the winter. Let's actually begin with the ergonomy of this bike. I'm 175 centimeters, as many of you know, uh, so I'm not the tallest rider. For me, the biggest problem with the Tenere 700 was actually the riding ergonomy, like the fact that the bike is so tall and uh, many other factors as well because when I sit here on this bike with the stock bar I felt like the stock bar is so far away from me that I had to reach for it constantly it was super nice when I was doing hard off-road riding but when I was doing something casual like riding for hours on tarmac road because I use this bike as my commuter bike as well I go to places I do things with this bike I'm not always riding off-road with this. The biggest change is I changed the bars to this Evo Pro Taper Adventure Bar. It's much taller and it has a much more aggressive sweep. So it, it turns towards you, the rider. And with this bar, I have no issues with my, my wrist getting painful or anything like that. So. The one issue I have with this bar is, for me, it's a little bit too tall. Because I ride here now like this. If it was like a couple centimeters taller than this, I would not have any circulation to my fingers. Even now it's a little bit, a little bit iffy. For this summer I changed the low seat option from Yamaha. And now the bar feels even taller. So. In the rear I have a lowering link, the Yamaha OEM lowering link. It's 18 millimeters lower than the stock, so not much. But you can definitely tell the difference. The front tubes are lowered 14 millimeters. So you can see the front, tube, front tubes there a little bit more than you can usually on a stock bike. So the bike is basically a little bit less than 2 centimeters lowered just by doing that and people saying that the geometry is going to change and the bike is going to feel completely different that's all bullshit the change is so minute that any normal rider 
I'm gonna say is lying if they can feel the difference. I have 20,000 kilometers on this. First 10,000 kilometers were pretty much on the stock height setting. And second 10,000 kilometers were with the bike lowered down and I can feel no difference. If anything, I would say that the bike is way more confidence in inspiring because I know when I sit on the bike, I can reach the ground. Even on both sides if I want to. You can see that there's snow on the road here. <laughs> so I definitely, if you are not a tall rider, I would definitely consider doing the lowering option that I did to this bike. But what I can say honestly, the middle option, the 18 millimeter lowering, is gonna make no difference to the feeling of the bike can't see anything because the sun is so bright. Other things about the Tenere 700, what I've been complaining about is the suspension. First of all, what I've did to the suspension, I've done a very small 2.5 millimeter, I can't see anything, a 2.5 millimeter spacer in the front forks, so I, it is gonna act as a preload adjuster. Already icy here. Oh, really, really icy and slippery. So yeah, I have the 2.5 millimeter spacers in the front tubes, and then I have the 85 newton meter rally rate spring in the rear. And the bike is now like manageable. But what I've been saying a long time about the Tenere suspension is that it's very crashy and it feels very hard. Oh, it's so slippery here. This might be falling time. Ooh, like straight ice. Bike feels now, it feels composed and it's gonna take hits very well, but it's not comfortable. It's not a comfortable suspension. The, the basic Tenere suspension is very crashy and you can feel every single undulation on the road. Every bump is gonna be directly transferred in your ass and your spine so it's definitely not the most comfortable bike I've ridden not like a comfortable cruiser like a like a GS or even a KTM 890 adventure is way more comfortable Woo! even though you can do touring with this and I've done it a lot it's not gonna be the most comfortable solution you can have. And I've already stated in my Torx 660 ride that I do think that the Torx 660 is the better bike from these two. Oh, it's so icy. <laughs> Technically better. The suspension feels more composed. It feels more comfortable. It has a lot more power, not a lot more power, but you can definitely feel the power difference. And uh, I like the nature of the 660 engine as well, but I would still say that the Tenere engine, the CP2 engine, is my favorite motorcycle engine still. I would say the Torek is very, very good bike. And in many aspects, it's, it's better than the Tenere 700. But I have to say one thing about the Tenere, and it's a big one. This bike is super, super exciting to ride. It has that something different. It has that X factor that you can't really explain. Listen to it. It's so aggressive. You can say that the Torex 660 is like a soccer player. It's very talented, it's very capable, it has a lot of legs to run around, but the Tenere 700, it's like a rugby player. It's this hammer that is gonna do everything you ask it to do, but it's not gonna do it like extremely finessed. It's gonna just plow through everything and it's gonna shout while doing it. This bike gets my blood going. It's a crazy, crazy hooligan machine. And that's why I love it so much. I know it's worse than many other bikes, but it's so difficult 
to get rid of this adrenaline machine that is the Tenere 700. I completely understand anyone who is a fan of this bike because this is definitely one of the greatest. Listen to it. Third gear, fourth gear, still rolling the back wheel. Fifth gear, now I'm getting some traction. Oh, it's still rolling, rolling, rolling. And it's so, so slippery. Oh, oh yeah, the back wheel is still turning. I'm doing way too much speed. And if I give it the gas, the back wheel is still going, still going. Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. The Tenere 700. It's a madman. It gets my blood going. Absolutely. <laughs> oh. I can say that the suspension is crashy. I can say that the geometry is not the perfect for me. I can say that the bike is definitely... It is top heavy. It is top heavy. It feels heavy when you to turn it here. It feels like a tank absolute monster of a bike but it's super reliable the engine sounds like crazy good especially with the HP Corsa pipe that I have on the bike there's so much power off-roading that you're never gonna miss a 10 horsepower difference to another bike this is just crazy crazy power and uh, what I would say about the clutch it's it is really tough to pull you can get really tired from your fingers pulling this clutch that's absolutely true and there are many other negatives about this bike but the X factor this bike has in spades it's just something you can't quantify in words still slipping in this tarmac section on the rear wheel because it's so cold the wheel is not getting any any heat and uh, yeah I just love this bike anytime I ride this bike I, I it's hard hard for me to be objective about the bike because it's so good it just brings a smile in your face <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sad I have to put this away for the winter. It's just, uh, it, it is a gem of a bike. I know it's heavy. You, you do this and you compare it to the Touareg or pretty much any other bike. And this feels like a lump of steel. It's behind your knees and between your knees. It's really heavy and really... Like I've said in previous, previous uh, videos, you really have to know what you're doing with this one. You have to command it. It's a beast. You have to use your strength, use your technique. One thing is for damn sure. Anytime I ride this bike, I have so much fun. And it does turn heads when you ride it. It's a beautiful package. I think it's still the best looking adventure bike on the market today. I know Ducati Desert X is a good looking bike, but I still think this is better. It's sleeker, it's more aggressive looking. And there's not a single angle on this bike that it looks bad. So if, it, if looks are important to you, then the Tenere, you can't really go wrong with this one. It's a phenomenal beast, phenomenal machine. And if I had all the money in the world, I would probably never sell this. And I hope I don't, kinda. But I do know my, my limitations as a rider and what I want to do with these bikes. I am moving forward to some smaller machines probably in the future. Like uh, if I want to do an adventure, a long adventure I would probably rather do it with the KTM 690 because I want to do it off-roading and this is uh, kind of a heavy beast doing that alone if you get stuck with this bike you're in big trouble if you're a 6 2 big guy with uh, 110 kilograms of pure muscle you can wrestle this bike up and down 
all day long and you're not gonna feel it. But if you're like me, I weigh 80 kilos, I'm 175. I'm definitely not the biggest guy or the strongest or the best rider here. So I feel when I try to lift this up many times during a ride, it gets really, really tiring. This video makes no, absolutely no sense, I know that. I'm just rambling with the Tenere 700. Let's have a conclusion. The bike geometry is not for everyone. It's a big cabin. It's a big bike. So you have to be, I would suggest you be at least five centimeters taller than me to recommend this bike. Like 175, I'm in the low side and I've had to do some changes to the bike. And it's very, very heavy to lift up. Anyone knows who has been lifting one of these up from the ground. It's one of the heaviest bikes I've ever had to lift. And I've lifted uh, even the big GS. This definitely feels really, really heavy. And if you're very tired from your ride, six hours doing off-road, you are definitely gonna feel the weight. The stock clutch is really stiff. So if you have to do a lot of feathering in technical terrain, you're gonna feel it in your fingers. It's gonna burn after a couple of hours and you're gonna get tired. Uh, the comfort, just sitting here. After doing these ergonomic changes that I talked about, it's pretty good. I would say I can do 500 kilometers a day rather decently okay with this one and I'm not gonna feel it in my ass if I stand up here and there. And then what comes to the seat, I have no problems with the seat. I have nothing on the seat, I have, it's just a bone stock seat. And this year I've been riding with the low Yamaha seat. So it's even harder. And I have no issues with that either. I've done some couple of longer trips with this bike and uh, the seat is fine for my ass. But I am, my ass is pretty much rubber all, this, all these years of riding. So some of you may not like it, but to me it's fine. The high beam light is one of the negatives, very small negative, but the high beam is very narrow, very centered. You can't really see much with it. The low beam is really awesome. It's very wide and very bright, but the high beams on this headlight unit, they're, they're not good. So if you ride 100 kilometers an hour in the darkness, you're not gonna see much. The sound of this bike is to me still the best sounding bike on the market today. It's just fantastic. I have a sound video on my channel def separately. I can post it down below with this HP Corsa pipe. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Oh shit, it's, it's ice. I lost my rear end there. I should probably just chill here because it's, it's really icy. <laughs> I am a little bit crazy for riding here. It's, uh, I, stick, I think it's still like negative one Celsius. So any wet spot you see, it's black ice. Uh, the windscreen on this Tenere, it's pretty good. I had the special flap there that the Yamaha sells when I did my grease trip. And it helps a lot with the wind noise, especially when you try to record these videos. The extra length, like five centimeters on top of the windscreen, makes a huge difference. So if you want to have a comfort, comf really comfortable cruising windscreen, you might need to change that. But uh, it's not the worst on the market, definitely. The 890 windscreen is absolutely terrible. It's horrible. But it's not a GS 1250 either. So. This tank bag for this Tenere has been really good. This is the day bag from SV Motec. I really recommend it. I wear this on the bike even when I do off-roading most of the time and it's been fine. I rode it all the way to the Greece and, and uh, there's no problems with this bag. It's been there for the last 20 kilo, thousand kilometers almost and it's still working like new. The stock mirrors are fine. I have these bike busters on the bike, they're fine. I fell down a few times with this bike and they haven't bent, they haven't... No problems with the bike busters. They're just brilliant. Changing the oil to this bike, 
it's very easy. I've done my oils about 5,000 kilometers, every 5,000 new oils in. And uh, it takes a couple minutes to change the oil on this and it's, it's super simple. This stock engine cover, if you do hard off-roading and if you get stuck sometimes, you have to change it. It's like, it's like plastic, it's really bad. I have the heat aluminium bar, which is aluminium plate, which is uh, much better. And it has held up really well on the last 20k. Oh, that engine note, that's just glorious. And the HP Corsa pipe is definitely not too loud when you're just touring 100 kilometers an hour on the road. You can't really hear it much, even though I've been riding with that for the last 8,000 kilometers. It still sounds the same as it did when it was brand new. So I can give a big shout out to the HP Corsa high pipe. It's like SP1 high something. It's really good and I have a video about it on my channel as well. All these imperfections of this bike, it's, it's still a very, very complete package. With the reliability, with the looks, with the sound, with the engine, how it feels from very down low on the RPM range, it feels, it pulls very smoothly. It's a smooth, smooth engine. Very easy to ride, very easy to control. If you're worried about the range on the tank, look at the Pavlin's videos from uh, Motorcycle Adventures. He's riding this bike all over the world to Magadan and all over the like other side of the planet and he's fine with the 16 liters of this tank. In closing I'm still in love with this bike 20,000 kilometers without any problems and the bike is still fun as hell. So I cannot say don't buy the Tenere, but buy it with caution. You might fall in love with it and you can never sell it. That's my problem. <laughs> That's a good problem to have. So goodbye and see you on the next videos.